Good morning, Calvary. I'm Pete. I'm the Life Group Pastor here at Calvary, and I have your word for the day. So I have a question. What is the most generous gift you've ever received? Maybe you got a brand new car when you turned 16, or maybe you've been the recipient of an expensive piece of jewelry, or maybe a large cash gift has been given to you. One of the more generous gifts that I've ever received came from my teenage son. He gave me a brand new iPhone for Christmas. Can you believe that? I couldn't. I was in awe that he would act so generously toward me, spending his own hard-earned cash on such an expensive gift. Now, that gift communicated a couple of things. One, it communicated, Dad, you've got to get out of the Stone Age and move up with a more up-to-date phone. But mostly it communicated his love and his respect for me. He cared enough to be generous with me. And today's proverb extols the wisdom of being generous towards God. It's in Proverbs 3, 9 through 10. I'm going to read it to you. Proverbs 3, 9 through 10. And it says this, Honor the Lord with your wealth and with the first fruits of all your produce. Then your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will be bursting with wine. Putting God first in your finances is a very real way to honor Him. When we honor God with our wealth, it shows our love, our gratitude, and our respect for Him. Now Solomon wrote this to an agrarian society. So to calculate their wealth, they often thought in terms of harvest. Now harvests don't happen every two weeks like our paychecks. No, they had to wait long seasons before they brought in their produce. By the time the harvest hit, they really needed that produce. Their other supplies had run dry. The stuff in their storehouses was old and some of it would be starting to rot. They really needed that harvest. They had plans for how they were going to use it and how they were going to make it last until the next harvest. But God challenges them. Honor me first with those first fruits. Don't use them for yourself first. Honor me with them. So what does that mean for us? Well, unless you're a miracle worker, you probably aren't growing much produce in the scorching Arizona desert. So we need to honor the Lord with our money. And that honoring should be first on our list. If you live on a budget, you could apply this by placing giving to charity as the first line item. If you live paycheck to paycheck, before you decide what you're going to do with that check, ask, how am I going to honor God with it? If you, have if you have a pretty fixed income, you might do what my wife and I do. We've set up automatic donations that go right from our bank account to our church and the missionaries that we support. This is one way that we put honoring God first with our own finances. And honoring God first with our wealth doesn't only involve giving to churches and charity. It involves everything we do with our finances. Is God happy with how you spend your money? As with most Proverbs, this one also comes with an action and a consequence. Verse 10 says, Then your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will be bursting with wine. Now, I know most of us listening don't have barns or vats of wine that need to be filled. But the principle is that God will bless you and make sure that you have what you need and more. Honoring God with our wealth is simply a reflection of the things he's already given to us and what he's promised to bless us with in the future. Let me encourage you, pull out those budgets or check out your bank account and decide how you will honor God with your wealth today.